Did life originate off Earth? Are we the aliens? That's what they discussed in the latest episode of The Y Files. I'll put a link in the description so you can watch the full episode on their channel. We're going to take a look at a short clip from that episode that discusses a theory of panspermia you may not be familiar with. And we're also going to discuss what exactly is panspermia. And I found an article on Forbes that discusses something called galactic panspermia. And it's an interesting theory about life in the universe and not in the way you think. And there was also a mission on board the International Space Station by Japanese scientists called the Tampopo mission, where they studied microbial life in outer space, open space, to see if it would live and how long it would live. And the results are fascinating because the idea of panspermia may be more real than you think. Let's dive in. If you're new to the channel, y'all, and you like content like this, please hit that subscribe button. Put out a new video every day, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. I do not miss a day. And of course, please hit that like button, y'all. That really helps out the videos. So thank y'all so much for the support there. And of course, comment down below of what you think of the Y Files theory about panspermia and galactic panspermia. Curious to read y'all's comments because this is a fascinating episode. Let's dive in. Now, let's start with what panspermia is, just to, generally. It's the uh, hypothesis states that the seeds of life exist all over the universe and can be propagated through space from one location to another. So basically, generally, the idea is that like on a comet or asteroid, right, bacteria or microbial life is on that asteroid. It hits a planet, Earth, spreads life. We evolve into what we are, right? all life. That's one theory of, it, of panspermia. Now, how microbial life gets around the universe is where the Y-file steps in, because they've got an interesting theory. So let's take a look, see what they say. Four billion years ago, the Earth's surface was very different than it is today. No continents existed. The entire planet was covered in ocean, but the waters were shallow, no more than 100 feet deep in most areas. Countless volcanoes covered the globe, spewing molten rock that would soon form tiny islands. The atmosphere was a heavy shroud of volcanic ash, superheated dust, and toxic gas. This was perfect for the large craft that had just entered Earth's orbit. This craft was on a mission. On the vessel was a cargo chamber filled with row after row of large capsules, each about the size of a car. The capsules contained trillions of prokaryotes. Prokaryotes are single-celled organisms. They don't even have a nucleus. But these organisms carry something very important in each and every one of them, DNA. There was a loud hiss, a door opened, and a capsule was ejected toward the planet below. The vessel powered up its engines as soon as the payload entered the atmosphere. Moments later, the ship bolted out of the solar system and onto its next destination. The alien capsule glowed red hot as it pushed through the Earth's atmosphere. This wasn't a problem, it was designed for this. When the object hit the water, the impact was violent. This was also expected. The capsule opened. Out poured what looked like thousands of glass beads. Each of these beads contained millions of organisms. The ocean water dissolved the beads and released the organisms into the boiling seas. Most died immediately. This was also expected, but some survived. These pioneering organisms thrived in the depths of the ocean around hydrothermal vents heated by the Earth's core. The organisms adapted, evolved, and diversified. This was the plan. And so the tiny planet Earth began its journey from a barren piece of lifeless rock to a vibrant oasis of life. The creators knew it would take a few billion years for intelligent life to evolve. This was all encoded in the DNA of those first microorganisms. The DNA was a program. The programmers knew that when their creations were finally ready, they decode the program and find a way to call home. That is fascinating, right? So what he's saying there is, um, again, link in the description so you can watch the full episode. It's, it's f f absolutely fascinating. But what he's saying there is, right, like, <clears throat> one, that instead of 
microbial life or bacteria coming on an asteroid just naturally, right? That aliens came in a spaceship, dropped, you know, dropped the life here, you know, purposely brought it to this planet. And within the blueprints, right, the DNA that they left, there is a program that can be decoded to then reach back out to them, right, after we've evolved. That is fascinating. I've never heard that theory. And that is quite interesting, right? Like, imagine deep within you is the blueprint to contact these aliens. And you've had it in your DNA the whole time. Right. And only till we got advanced enough where we could study DNA could we find that code. That is fascinating um, and quite interesting. Right. So, again, I recommend going to check out this episode because it looks it looks at panspermia in a much different way. And they even talk about, you know. Basically, some real world evidence that, um, you know, maybe there's more to this than meets the eye. Right. Which is. Also fascinating, which brings me to my next point here, which is this article I found in Forbes, right? And again, it's called the Tampopo Project. So let me read it. However, for panspermia to have any credence requires proof that bacteria could survive a long journey through the vacuum, temperature fluctuations, and intense UV radiation in outer space, right? Q the Tampopo project, right? Basically, they're saying in order for this theory to be plausible, panspermia, we need to even make sure that life can even exist in outer space. Otherwise, what's the point, right? So in 2020, that's what happened. Tampopo, dandelion in English, is a scientific experiment to see if bacteria can survive in the extremes of outer space. The researchers from Tokyo University, in conjunction with Japanese National Space Agency, wanted to see if the bacteria Dianococcus <laughs> Why is that funny? I don't know. Dianococcus. I mean, could they not come up with a better name? Um, wanted to see if the bacteria Dianococcus could survive in space, so it had placed in exposure panels on the outside of the International Space Station, the ISS. It's known as being resistant to radiation. Dried samples of different thicknesses were exposed to space environment for one, two, or three years, and then tested to see if any survived. They did. Largely by a layer of dead bacteria, protecting a colony beneath it. The researchers estimate that a colony of one millimeter of diameter could potentially survive up to eight years in outer space conditions. Y'all, this is, it's crazy, right? That is insane. Basically, they're saying like the outer part of the bacteria, right? That, that dies, but inside it sort of protects itself. It sort of cocoons like the dead bacteria around it sort of protect it, right? I mean, one millimeter thick. So what are we talking about here, right? And how far can eight years in outer space get you in travel? Imagine it's three feet thick. I mean, I guess that's a lot of bacteria, but you get my point. So what does this mean for panspermia? The results suggest that Dianococcus, um, take a shot every time I say that, could survive. The results suggest that Dianococcus could survive during the travel from Earth to Mars and vice versa, which is several months or years in the shortest orbit, said this guy, Akihiko Yamagishi, a professor at Tokyo University of Pharmacy and Life Sciences and principal investigator of Tampopo. That means spacecraft visiting Mars could theoretically carry microorganisms and potentially contaminate its surface. However, it isn't just about Earth and Mars. The ramifications of panspermia, if proven, are far-reaching. The origin of life on Earth is the biggest mystery of human beings, and scientists have totally different points of view on that matter, said Dr. Yamagishi. Some think that life is very rare, 
and happen only once in the universe, while others think that life can happen on every suitable planet. If panspermia is possible, life must exi exist much more often than we previously thought. I agree. And that's basically what they, pro you know, they proved, right? Because this idea that some think that life is very rare and only happened once in the universe, I mean, what are the odds of that? These same people will also admit the universe is like so big you can't even wrap your head around it. And they think we're the only life. I mean, again, how does that make any sense? That makes zero sense, y'all. I don't get it, right? That's like Earth, right? It's teeming with life, man. Why? I get we have Antarctica, and I get there's some other parts of, of Earth where life is minimal. But as a whole, it's crazy, right? All the life there is from microorganisms to right the biggest animals and mammals on the planet it's absolutely insane to me life thrives and that this experiment by these japanese scientists proves that life thrives man and that does mean in my opinion i agree with the scientists life must exist much more often than we previously thought right again i know on this channel we discuss you know we're way past the point of are we alone in the universe, right? The discussion is have we been visited by that life, right? And do we even, and do we have contact with them? Are we, right? But I think for just a person that's trying to get into this, accepting this will help you accept the other, right? Because then it becomes not so crazy that life could have visited Earth because you start to think, well, panspermia, then life is pretty not rare. That means it's probably out there a lot. That means probably advanced civilizations exist. That means... Probably they are flying around and visiting. That means it is likely that they could have come to this earth, right? That's what this helps prove, in my opinion, right? You can help extrapolate that. So for someone just laughing like, oh, aliens haven't come to earth, you crazy, you crazy YouTuber. Um, uh, not so fast. It's not such a laughable thing to say that other life has visited this planet, right? That's not crazy. But again, these same people will tell you, um, right, that the universe was created from just a little nothing, a little something, just, just the size of nothing, right, just blew up into that. That's okay. That seems reasonable. And what was before the Big Bang? Nothing. Okay, right, these things that, right, in science, it's like, that's plausible, but the idea that other life could come here. Again, they've proven that life can exist in just open space, bacterial life. It will find a way to survive. Right. So, yeah, I find this fascinating. Now, what is interstellar panspermia and galactic panspermia? Let's jump in. This is the hypothesis, and it's one with zero evidence, okay, that life exists throughout the galaxy and or universe specifically because bacteria and microorganisms are spread around by asteroid, comets, space dust, and possibly even interstellar spacecraft from alien civilizations. In 2018, which is two years before the Tampopo mission, okay, keep in mind, a paper concluded that the likelihood of galactic panspermia is strongly dependent upon the survival lifetime of the organisms as well as the velocity of the comet or asteroid, positing that the entire Milky Way could be potentially exchanging biotic components across vast distances. Basically meaning life is just spreading all over the universe from everything that's flying around. It's got some sort of life on it. It's hitting this and it's creating life and that, you know. I mean, that that seems the most plausible. Like it's being pollinated, right? Like a dandelion that, that it goes out, right? Like imagine taking some dust and just blowing it out of your hand. Like it goes everywhere. The, the universe is being pollinated. Again, this helps lead credence to this idea that there could be no advanced civilization. In no way could they visit Earth. Uh, galactic panspermia, absolutely, because the life is, the universe is teeming with life because it just gets carried everywhere, and I think it's a mixture. I think there are alien civilizations spreading life, but I also think it's just asteroids, comets, right, space dust, right, other, whatever, other things, right, so again, 
it helps lead credence to that fact. I think that's important. So if anyone's, if you're ever talking to someone who's not really into this subject and they're like, oh, it's so crazy. There's no way that could be life coming here. Like explain this to them, explain the galactic panspermia and explain that this mission that they did. And like, it proves life is totally plausible out in space and it's probably everywhere. So the idea that some of that life didn't advance like we did, I mean, who, what, okay. We're going to say that if there's life in the universe and even more life, we're the most advanced period in the entire universe. Uh, that's also crazy, right? We're probably somewhere in the middle, more than likely, which means there are way more advanced civilizations to us. And who knows by how much, right? Because we evolved on earth a certain way. Now, what it also might be interesting to think about is, remember at the beginning in the Y Files episode, they talked about you know, there's sort of a code in our DNA, right? A program to help communicate with the aliens that dropped us off on Earth, right? To let us evolve. Well, what if within that DNA, it was also, you know, the instructions for how we should evolve, which means we evolve specifically exactly like they meant us to, you know? And there was no doubt that we would end up here. That's interesting. I don't know. What do y'all think? Or was it free will that got us here? Or a mix, right? Because you can believe all that and believe ultra terrestrials or interdimensional beings or ET extraterrestrials, right? Coming from another planet, time travelers. That can all be true plus panspermia, right? That, that's the fascinating thing about this subject is that there's just a lot of possibility. But from a real world, evidence-based, science-based, right? foundation we know that bacteria and life can survive out in space so this idea that life isn't out there somewhere i just i just don't buy it you know so anyway thank y'all so much for tuning in i do appreciate it to all you new subscribers and vetters thank y'all so much for joining the channel really hope you're enjoying the videos we're putting out we i have a bunch of great videos coming out in the next few days y'all um yeah, I'm really excited to share them. So I hope you stick around again. Don't forget, we put our new video every day, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. So don't forget to comment down below what you think of this theory of panspermia, right? Um, the aliens coming and seeding our planet, right? Um, and us evolving from that. Yeah, just so fascinating to me. Um, and if one day we can decode that program to communicate with them, that would also be insane. Again, I'm not saying this is true. I'm just like, this is cool to think about, right? So anyway, tell me what y'all think in the comments. Thank y'all again for watching. Remember, every day's a gift, y'all. We'll see you tomorrow, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. Peace.